since yesterday, or at least reports of uh, announcements to come, and they poached somebody from cross town. Uh, Luis Severino on a one-year $13 million deal to stay in New York City and join the other side. Interesting deal because Severino coming off a down year, coming off of surgery, two-time All-Star. One-year $13 million for a guy with big upside, but also a guy who really struggled in 2023. Yeah, it's it's an interesting... This And I'm not using that word, just, just throw it out there. It, this is really an interesting deal because you don't know what you're going to get. And if he has the high upside, wow, what a great deal. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't, then what a bad deal. I mean, that's really where it's at. Well, it's, it's low risk. I mean, it's one year, 13 million. 13 million is a huge amount of money for the, uh, you know, person like you and I. But in baseball terms, one year, 13, not, yeah. not an enormous sum of money. And to your point, it's a lot of money. But when you have, if you're able to make shrewd moves with your money like the Mets can do and they miss, mm -hmm. and it's not. 30 million. Right. That's a good point. Then you can be able to do that. Joel's over there nodding his head. So well, but yeah, Joel but I want to bring Joel in after this next one because the Mets also come to a, uh, an agreement with Joey Wendell on a one year, $2 million contract. Look, I, I think you feel the same way about Joey Wendell that I do. Very underrated presence in a lineup, versatile. Uh, by the way, every one of these rips that we see, no batting glove guy. I love it. Uh, Joey Wendell's a guy that can help you in a lot of ways, and on one year, two million, he's chewing up very little payroll, and he's going to contribute. Here's his uh, last three years in a snapshot glance. Uh, an OPS of only 554 last year. Did have a down year batting average-wise in Miami, but uh, I've long been an admirer of what he can do based on his versatility. One year, two million. That's not bad money at all. Let's well, go to Joel I, I, for I think with him, oh, you can bring Joel. Yeah, in Joel, I, let, me, let me give your reaction, point, get, your reaction on both of these first. I would imagine you have uh, <clears throat> a strong sense of, of feeling on the Luis Severino contract. Yeah, uh, Wendell is replacing uh, essentially Luis, Luis Guillermi yeah. as uh, uh, the jack-of-all-trades infielder. By the way, another guy who didn't wear batting gloves, Guillermi, just like Wendell. Uh, but the Severino move is the bigger move. And what you always want is to try to know the most about a free agent player who's not yours. They have a great resource. Carlos Mendoza came to the Yankee organization in 2009 mm. and worked in the minor leagues. Luis Severino came to the Yankees as a teenager in 2011, a minor leaguer. Their rise to the major leagues is concurrent. Uh, the bench coach for the last few, four years in New York with the Yankees was Carlos Mendoza. He's now the Mets manager. He knows a lot about this player, which means he knows he's a good guy, he's a good teammate, and that he still has talent. He was throwing his fastball to the same average velocity, not of his past, but as Garrett Cole last year, but it was getting killed. Was he tipping? I will say this. We see a lot of these contracts every offseason, what I would call like the one-year rejuvenation contract. In this case, the one-year $13 million contract, this almost completely mirrors what the Dodgers did last year with Noah Syndergaard, a player a lot like Severino, burst on the scene starting in 2015, had years where you thought he could win the Cy Young, got hurt, lost his magic, signed a one-year $13 million contract with the Dodgers, he didn't pitch well for the Dodgers, got traded to Cleveland, didn't pitch well for Cleveland, got released at the end of August. So this always sounds like, oh, the big name, the gamble. I think it's a worthwhile gamble, especially because they have the inside information from Mendoza, and they probably feel with their, you know, every team feels like, oh, we could fix the guy that they didn't. But I will say this usually doesn't work. But the Mets have to sign at least three starters this offseason, and they're taking a gamble that on the upside they have a guy, if he could take the ball 20 or 25 times, he's actually a guy who, if they got that far, could start a postseason game if he's right. And, and Joel, this is the thing a big market club and a big, big market like the Mets or the Dodgers can do, and Cleveland can't miss. $13 million to Cleveland, that's a huge hit on your payroll. 13 to the Mets... It's like, all right, we can take that gamble. There's Big no, difference. There's no doubt about it. And I suspect they're going to take other gambles like this. I, I think they're in on Yamamoto. I think they're in on Shota Imanaga. Uh, I don't think they'd sign both guys at the same time, uh, but they're, they're deep in with those guys. Uh, I think they're in in a lot of places. Again, they need three starters. I suspect that they'll try to add one more bat, maybe a DH-type bat, a Justin Turner, a J.D. Martinez-type. 
I know that the Mets are playing for 2025 in the future. That's the idea of bringing in David Stearns. It's the idea of eating about $80 million worth of future contracts on Scherzer and Verlander at last trade deadline to get prospects. Is you're thinking big picture, we want to have something sustainable. But I don't think it's in the DNA of Steve Cohen to just punt on a season. And they're going to try within, without disrupting future rosters and payroll to try to build as good a team as possible for 2024 to at least try to be the Arizona Diamondbacks next year.